Sports, where we review all the best sports clips from around the world. If this is your first time checking out a video, please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. We're watching a clip of Undisputed with Skip Bayless and talking about... Um, there was a reaction to uh, Antonio Pierce, the new coach, the new head coach for the Las Vegas Raiders. And I was hearing that a lot of people were trying to say that it was like a whole racist thing, kind of a similar to just, you know, shut up and do your job kind of a thing, right? Like just shut up and dribble type mentality. Um, I deeply regret this, especially or um, re reject this, especially if we're talking about race. Um, and so I'm really curious to see if they bring race into it. I don't know if they are. I haven't watched this clip yet. But like I said, I saw online that a lot of people were talking about it and turning it into these racial undertones, which I just, it drives me crazy and I reject wholeheartedly. Unless the former GM who made that statement has that as a background, as part of his um, background. I don't know. I haven't looked into that aspect of it because quite frankly, um, I'm not going to just start like digging up, you know, every little thing that this guy has said and, and try to try to assume but i'm really curious to see what they have to say let's take a look and then we'll break it down from there former nfl executive michael lombardi had this to say on a podcast about new raiders coach antonio pierce he thinks he knows the raider way because he's from compton it's a joke this guy is driving me crazy can he just shut up why won't somebody in the raiders tell him to shut up Michael Irvin, the floor is yours first. Hey, listen, and let me let me preempt this by saying, you know, I know Mike Lombardi worked with him, and, and, and consider him to be a very good friend and, and and a good dude, and a good dude. But this, 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 this shocked me, because when I hear this, when I hear it, I I, I hear something personal in this, you know, uh, it, to tell to say that. Well, he doesn't know the Raiders' way. And, and, and if you listen to what Mike Lombardi's talking about on that podcast, he was talking about the Raiders' way is about the kind of players that you draft, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the hard players, the gritty players, you know, that's what the Raiders' way is. It, it, and I'm like, wait a minute, the Raiders' way, I, I thought, also is a mentality. You know what I mean? It's when we, this is how we play the game. This is when we play the way we play, that that's the Raiders way. That's what I saw when they beat the Kansas City Chiefs. So so what, what shocks me and what shocks me is, is how is Mike Lombardi, who's, you know, on the outside, on the outside, I know he had his son, who he had his sons who were with the Raiders, you know, Mick and Matt, who was with the Raiders, one office coordinator and one was, uh, you know, an assistant to the wide receivers. And, and he, he, he let them go. So he let, he let both of them go. I reached out to AP and said, what is this? I, Antonio Pierce, Coach Pierce. I reached out and said, what is this? It sounds personal. He said, I, I have no idea. He said, I have no idea where that's coming from. For Mike Lombardi to say that he has no idea uh, about the Raiders' way, that Coach Pierce has no idea about the Raiders' way, and he grew up right there in Compton. Right, right, right there in Compton. That, that's, it's mind-boggling for you to even say that. Every coach in the National Football League sells his organization and his program. That's what we do. That's what they do. And a lot of them didn't grow up right in the middle. So I just want to say right off the top, because obviously uh, Michael Irvin didn't make it anything to do with race or anything like that. But I want to say that in that context, I wholeheartedly agree and don't think that that criticism um, is necessarily uh, valid. Although, in which I'm going to talk in a moment, I'm going to first see what Skip and Keyshawn has to say about it with regards to if they start to bring up race in that regard and, and the criticisms. But specifically, what Michael Irvin is saying, I don't have a whole lot to disagree with that. Um, but that's why I really want to see if Skip and Key uh, set me up for what I'm, what I'm, where I want to take this. So of the coach of the team that they are coaching for him to say this man knows nothing about this is is, is absolutely ignorant it's ignorant it's, it's it's like saying if you say to a fan if you say hey what do you guys know you guys never played the game you never played the game so then they come back and say oh so i can't learn the game because i can't i, I didn't play the game that means i can't learn 
Uh, uh, so now you're saying to a football player, well, you're a football player. You can never be a great fan. How can you know the Raiders' way? You know, it, it just, it's crazy. It sounds personal, and I know Mike Lombardi is better than that. I, he's just better than that. I, I'm shaking my head in disbelief at you, Michael, because I really feel like you are, have bugged my dressing room. Because every <laughs> time I look up and I say something, you go first and you say the same exact <laughs> damn thing that I'm already yeah. thinking and I gave yeah. Nick my notes and he's saying from the from the top, right? I know Mike Lombardi like you. I consider him a really good friend. Like you. I'm sitting right, there, I'm right, saying right, to myself, right, right. is Michael bugging right, right. my room skin? Right, right. Then you talk about the Compton issue. Yes, he's from Compton. And Raiders, we love the Raiders from LA and from Compton in Southern California. Right. We all love the, I love the Raiders. I think I know the Raider right. way. Then you talked about this gritty, tough, aggressive type player that you go and you draft and you, you recruit and you sign in free agency the Raider way, the Raider style. And you also spoke like my notes say. Every head coach, when they get their job, they're going to talk encouragingly about their team in the way they right. want their team to perform. I feel like right. you've been stealing my stuff, but that's okay. It's all good. We think right. alike because we know this stuff. Right. We know the right. way it's supposed especially to be. Key, right, and especially, Key, think about this, Key and Kip, Skip. Think about it. When, when AP was coming up, that's all we knew. Hey, Raiders and all, all that black that, that Dr. Dre and all them was talking about. How can you not know that? It was a cultural like, just revolution. Yeah. All of it. And he was right in the middle of it. Yes. How can someone outside say he doesn't well, know the Raider way? When the main man inside, the great talent, the best talent they have, Max Crosby, said, I don't want to play unless it's him because he's giving us the Raiders way. That's the incredible thing to me. And, mm -hmm. and the thing is, Skip, in all of this, Michael also said there's something deeper, right? His sons was on the staff. Yeah. Yeah. Antonio Pierce yeah. said bye-bye. Wrong. Josh I, I, I don't think that had anything to do no, with it. No, it may or may yeah. not have anything to did. do with it. Right. But in this arena, in this arena of coaching, the professional coaches, general managers, scouts, whatever the case may be, they all got family coaching on teams. Right, and when, right. for whatever reason, it, Josh McDaniels brought them over when he came from New England, and they all were let go. Mike Lombardi is part of that, regardless if he was on the staff or not. His sons was on the staff. Mm -hmm. There's feelings that are there. Mm -hmm. You may not think, Skip, that that had anything yeah. to do with it. It may or may not have. Yeah. But it certainly smells like it to me and Michael when we're looking at it, right. okay? It. To sit there and say that he doesn't understand the Raider way, that's not true. The, the, the way, the Raider right. way is exactly what Michael was talking about. Yeah. It's, it's what I believe, and I never played for him or coached him. Right. It's all about being right. aggressive, yep. going attacking style, mm -hmm. doing exactly right. what they did against Patrick Mahomes Agreed. in Kansas City. doing it City. your way. They're doing, They're doing it, it your way. way. We right. may lead the league in penalties. We What's don't the, care. We may still lead, lead the, the league in way. penalties and doesn't we matter. So why even say right. it, Skip? Yeah. Why would you say this? What's right. the point? I got a point. Okay, so I have also known Michael Lombardi for a long time. I worked with Michael Lombardi, and I reached out to Michael Lombardi just before the show to say, w what are you saying here exactly? Because I told him that you guys had an issue with maybe a personal issue he might have with Antonio. He said he does not know Antonio. He has nothing personal, and he said, absolutely, this has nothing to do with my sons. That's from him. You can take it or leave it. Yeah. But the point is... He is old school, Michael Lombardi, and he worked under the late, great Al Davis with the Raiders and did get a Super Bowl ring right. for his duties there once upon a time. It was a long time ago, but he did that. And then he became Bill Belichick's right-hand man in New England for a number of years and got two Super Bowl rings out of that. He is so old school that he, and he now writes a column about leadership and coaching, and his point is that Antonio can't alert opponents that way. He can't poke the bear that way so early on before he's proven anything. And I did not say this back to Michael, but I'm with Antonio about how he's poking the bear because 
the, the, Michael's point is he's shattering the mold of how a coach does should do things, especially a young football coach, because he's talking too much too soon. And I'm saying to you now, look at the Raiders. Look, look, you, you know, you guys, uh, my, uh, Keyshawn, you ridiculed the Cowboys for 30 years since the Super Bowl. Look at what the Raiders haven't done. You want to talk about? So, okay. I'm, I'm impressed because they didn't make it a race thing. So on ESPN, Ryan Clark made it a race thing. You know, he made it a total race thing that Antonio Pierce needs to just sit down and shut up, you know, and, and, and be a good boy, as as Ryan Clark put it. Um, and I just reject that wholeheartedly, which is what I said at the top of the clip. Um, and I'm pretty impressed that they did not make it a racial thing. I am, I am like, shocked right now, quite honestly. I really, really am. Um, so um you know i i really am but the whole this whole idea and this is where i do i agree with what skip is trying to say and this is what i was you know waiting to be set up for what is the fact that he is he's talking too much he's saying things that should be saved for the locker room for what he should just be saying to his own guys his own team his own organization and not the public saying that we figured out Patrick Mahomes, that we g have the recipe and showed the whole NFL how to stop, you know, Mahomes. Like, those are just absurd statements to make. It's an absurd statement to make when you are the Raiders who are have not been good and the Chiefs just won the Super Bowl. It's just a silly thing to say. It doesn't, I mean, it just, you look dumb, quite honestly. And, and you look like it's one of those things when you're overcompensating. When you get a new coach who's running his mouth and is all animated and all intense, it's just not a good look because look at the guys who win year after year after year. They're just chilling on at you know at the top. They're just chilling on their you know on their throne. They don't even they don't even wear the crown. They because they just know I'm already the king. Andy Reid, Sean McVay, Shanahan. I mean they're just like yeah, this is just what we do. We win. It's the guys at the bottom that are always like, look at me, look at me, look at my crown. I'm the captain here. I'm the leader. That's who I am, who I am. Yes, 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 me, 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 me. And it's like, whoa, it's a little overcompensation here. I mean, we saw it with Sirianni, Dan Campbell. And that was what I also wanted to highlight this idea. Because again, I want to talk directly also to Ryan Clark saying, you know, that this is a racial thing because it's like when Dan Campbell started talking a lot and Nick Sirianni started talking a lot, especially in their opening press conferences, they got ripped apart, ripped apart. And those two dudes can't get any more white than they already are, okay? So, and, and Nick Sirianni continues to get ripped for his antics and the things that he says. And people do just say, well, you just shut up and coach. Just stop it. People say that all the time, both in the national media and certainly the local media in Philadelphia. Um, Dan Campbell, uh, less so, more because... Um, they were winning, right? They had a more successful season. I'm sure if they struggled more than they would. But again, Dan Campbell, this is why I hate bringing race into everything because Dan Campbell always gets called aggressive, right? When he goes for it, it's aggressive. They never say it's analytics, right? With all many other coaches, they say the analytics say you should go for it. But with Dan Campbell, it's always he's being aggressive. I could only imagine if Dan Campbell was black, what they would be saying about him. Where they would be saying, they would say, why is it always that when a black coach goes with the analytics, he's just being aggressive. But when a white coach does it, he's being, you know, smart and analytics, right? Like that's, that's where they always twist things and make everything about race. That's why people like Stephen A. Smith, Ryan Clark, they drive me nuts. They drive me up the wall because what they're saying is always so fundamentally skewed and just, you know, misinterpreted and just straight up wrong. Like, literally, Shannon Sharp and um, Stephen A. had to admit that their previous racial take with Eric Bieniemy was nothing to do with race. Before, they said, this is race, this is race, this is race. And then they pretty much had to eat crow and say, this has nothing to do with race. Why Bieniemy is not, you know, a head coach in the NFL. Clearly, something else is going on with him. You know, they had to admit that. And so, I, again, I'm, I'm very impressed that, you know, Skip and... And Key and, and Michael didn't make it about race. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely shocked because when I first started this clip, I was like, all right, let's go. Let's battle some racial narratives. And they didn't do it. Maybe because it seems like they all know him. That's probably why they all know Lombardi. So they, you know, it seems like they, they don't want to 
you know, throw that out there. That seems to me probably why. But it seems like the people that maybe don't have any type of relationship with him that can't consider him a friend, um, they're the ones that are maybe kind of throwing that away. But um, I, I, again, this is why I think it's so irresponsible to throw out race narratives where they don't exist. You know, it's, it's, it's bad to throw out any narrative where they don't exist, but especially something like racism. You know, you're, you, it's such a dangerous card to play. And this is why I love what Marcellus Wiley says, where he says, treat it like a weapon where, you know, if you're going to pull it out, it better be for good reason, you know, otherwise don't be pointed out all the time. And it's just, it's just so true. I mean, I think about that really in, in, again, in, in any specific circumstances, I always try to be really accurate with some of the things I say, if I think someone's being straight up racist or straight up wrong or this or that, like, I will say that out loud, whether it's on this YouTube channel or my personal life, no matter where it is. But to me, it's just one of the most dangerous things to call to, to, to tag something and flag something as something so bad and so dangerous as racism and have it not be accurate. You know, you want to always be incredibly accurate, not unlike when using a weapon, uh, because the consequences can be devastating. And it just, it's just, you know, you then you end up having the wrong conversation. I think Lombardi spoke too aggressively and used the wrong words when he says things like he thinks he knows the Raider way because he's from Compton, right? It's a joke. That's a dumb statement. Um, that I don't necessarily agree with because first off, what the heck is the Raider way? It's obviously not successful. Okay. Like seriously, like, 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 let's, what are we talking about here? I understand. I know what the Raider way is, but like, who, what the heck is the Raider way in 2024? You know, they're a failing organization that haven't been able to do anything in 20 plus years, probably longer. So this, I, so this idea that you want to preserve this way of doing something is just so dumb. I mean, it, I, 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 it, I always find that so comical. Again, how did the Patriot way work when Tom Brady wasn't the quarterback? Did it work out well for them? I, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, you know, th this idea that you don't adapt or change or that someone can't come into the fold and, and establish their identity is just, is just absurd. There is no soul of an organization. There is no so you can have the soul of a team, but that also only lasts for one season because each season is so differently. But this idea that there is this soul of an organization for years and years and years and years. Do you think the Kansas City Chiefs, the Kansas, who the Kansas City Chiefs are right now with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey and all that? Do you think in 30 years from now, they're going to have the same soul as when they had Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid? I don't think so. It's just so this idea that we always have to preserve this way of doing something is just absurd. Now, if you're talking about some positives, like it's the Raider way to always make sure that all the families are taken care of, to always make sure that any ex player, you know, never has to worry about, you know, health bills and finances ever again, right? That's different. But when you're talking about like, on field mentality, how you approach a draft, when you pay versus when you don't pay players, like, you know, an offensive scheme versus a defensive scheme. Like, it's all just so silly to me. Right? You know, the Chicago Bears are all about defense. We've been defense. That's how we built our identity. We are a defensive organization. We've been like that since the beginning of time. How's that working out for the Chicago Bears? Not very good. So it, it's just, uh, that I think is just silly and dumb. Um, and again, it's just like, he doesn't know the right away. So does that mean that like, you can only ever hire like, coaches who were like ex-players or from the Raider it's like how does anyone become the Raider way then like I I don't I don't understand and if you're just going to teach the Raider way then then like why ever hire some new why ever hire any type of specific coach then why not just hire like the cheapest coach in town because you're just going to be you know if you're just going to tell him how to coach rather than having the coach bring in his philosophy and mentality like that's a lot of times what you're paying for you know you you pay for Andy Reid to be Andy Reid, not to have Andy Reid be the Kansas City Chiefs way. That doesn't, that's not the way it works. It's not the way it works. Um, so I think if he called um, Antonio Pierce out for talking too much and being too vocal and saying, you know, kind of running his mouth, so to speak, um, I, I see that criticism completely. I wish 
Nick Sirianni would just shut up. Um, I think what Antonio Pierce was saying was, you know, kind of absurd. You know, the, the, the Chiefs just win the Super Bowl. And then he goes, yeah, we figured the Chiefs out. It's like, eh, what? Are you, uh, let's, okay, you beat them. Yes, I, I understand that. And that's great. But the Eagles beat the Chiefs. Uh, the Packers beat the Chiefs. The Bills had beaten the Chiefs. Like, you know, lots, you know, lots of teams this past season beat the Chiefs, but they didn't have the recipe to stopping Mahomes and the Chiefs. So it's just, it's just a dumb statement to make. And when you're a brand new coach and you're making statements that can be classified as dumb or just not wise, it's, it, it starts to spiral. Again, the kneecaps for Dan Campbell, biting kneecaps, and Nick Sirianni talking about planting flowers or whatever. I don't even remember what he said, but he was, he, I mean, he had one of the worst opening press conferences you've ever seen. And to this day, he still hasn't um, lived it down. That's just what happens. You're under a microscope. But... I do want to emphasize that I am really pr- I'm proud of these three guys for not bringing up race. Um, I'm very impressed. And to Ryan Clark, I think you're just a clown. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. I read every single comment. So if you think what I'm saying is the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard, please let me know in the comments below. If you think what I'm saying is the most amazing thing, then definitely please let me know. Either way, let's get into some discussions, let's get into some fights, but ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. Uh, And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the the, uh, visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.